We all have the capacity to deceive. It is our evolutionary heritage that helps us gain an advantage towards other species or even within our own. So you may be asking, how do we catch a deceiver? Well, I'd say in general, to catch a deceiver, you need to think like a deceiver. And in the real world, we have that pretty established. We have mastered the ways that we can basically identify cues that will betray a deceiver. We have mastered reading facial expressions since we were little kids. But however, online it's a whole other story. Just a couple of years ago, 15 years ago, we barely had any information on our hard drives. Today our lives are on the cloud. So this is not just a couple thousand years of deception history, but this is basically 20 years of rapidly evolving digital mayhem where deceivers have new opportunities, always fresh, and many opportunities to deceive us. So what determines a deceiver's success online? Many things like in the offline world, such as the, the, the deceiver's goals, the level of suspicion of the victim, as well as the deceptive attack, the type of deceptive attack. Oh, on the other hand, though, online we have different things, such as the prevalence of deception in the virtual environment, the system and design itself, and also ICT literacy. So, information communication technology literacy is particularly important from a user's perspective. So, no matter what your profession is, you have to deal with content, information, you have to find a way to communicate that content, and also you have to use technology to achieve that. So, you have to understand that social media in particular, it's not just a tool, but it's a virtual environment with completely different rules. Say you receive a request through Facebook from somebody that you may know. How would you be able to tell that this someone is somebody that you used to know in the past? So, if you had the phone number, you could just call them. But then again, if you had the know-how from information communication technology, then you could probably track their IP address. And that would pinpoint the location of that individual. And remember, the deceiver would have attempted to engineer a user profile that would look really genuine. However, if you are aware of that space and you have the experience, you could still see things that might be out of place that will betray the deception, the identity deception. Researchers and developers should also understand that different types of social media classifications require different attention to deception. For example, task-oriented services like Wikipedia are less likely to suffer from identity deception because the person, the deceiver, will have to match the performance and behavior of the person that they are impersonating. On the other hand, social networking sites, it's all fair game. Uh, and we have seen actually examples of people being impersonating others for long stretches of time with serious repercussions. As researchers, we also need to help build guidelines for professionals in terms of deception and deception detection. Now, we also have to think how we will deal with deception detection at an age where big data are all over the place. Processing big data is expensive, and so we have a lot of data that we can help us detect deceivers, but it's computationally inefficient to do so. And perhaps, maybe a solution for this is instead of going for deception detection, is to attempt to deal with deception prevention. We do know that the environment, the software design, affects the way that the deceivers act, and it can reduce the chances of deception. So if we figure out what factors affect deception, then we can find a way to efficiently prevent deception and working in conjunction with deception detection in order to try and get those deceivers that will still manage to get through. Perhaps the most important thing for a change is changing our minds. Deceivers are out there and we are all exposed. How do we detect or prevent costly deception incidents? Well, this is something that we need to talk about. Truth comes out in the end, usually. We just have to make sure that it's not too late.